there have been a number of videos surfacing on the internet of drag queens, big men in women's clothing and provocative outfits dancing in front of, sexually dancing, sorry, in front of women and their children. And the women are cheering them on. And the children are there and, and they're going, oh, this is okay. Oh, this is normal. Drag queens going into schools. Schools having books that explain about sexual activities to four and five year olds. That shouldn't even be talking about sex. They're Why does a four, four year old, whether it's, whether it's gay sex or heterosexual sex, why is a four and five year old knowing anything about sex? Why? Why, why are we talking about Why this? does it, you can't say that it's not some type of brainwashing. It yeah. makes no sense. And so this is what we're talking about. This identity politics, uh, what I identify as, what should be normal, what should be acceptable is, is getting out of hand these days. And yeah, the Bible literally says that these things will happen. People becoming lovers of themselves and expecting everyone to be okay with it. Hey family, welcome back to our channel. We are Velvet Devotion, AKA Mr. and Mrs. B. And for anyone watching for the first time, we are Christian worship leaders here in our home church in London. And this channel is all about encouraging artists and helping them to understand the issues they may face due to their creative nature. So first things first, we just wanna say, guys, it's been a great month. Thank you so much for all the support that we've received over the last few weeks. We've gained quite a lot of subscribers and quite a lot of support, quite a lot of views. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, for anyone who hasn't yet subscribed, we can see that the majority of people that are watching our videos are not subscribed. Please hit the subscribe button. It's free. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It just means that you'll be kept up to date with our content. So please do that right now. So yes, basically today we are going to be discussing specifically the agendas that are happening in Hollywood that are being portrayed in Disney and that are affecting our children and affecting our community at large um, and although we are a channel that specifies on helping artists to understand their creativity and the problems that come with it we also think it's important to let people know when they are being influenced by artistic people by creative people and they don't even realize that they're being influenced because mm. that is a part of an artist's nature we believe that is how God designed us to be able to influence people. And unfortunately, this can be used for bad things as well as good things. So just to clarify, this is a Christian channel. So even though all are welcome and we're more than happy to have everyone representing different nationalities, different faiths come and watch us, we want you to understand that we are a Christian channel and because of that, our beliefs and our opinions are based on biblical truth. Mm -hmm. So if you are not a Christian, it's very possible that you may not agree with the majority of the things that we're saying mm -hmm. and that's fine, okay? However, we're not gonna change our opinion because mm -hmm. it is based on what the Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, um, the Bible actually warns us about a lot of the things that we're gonna be saying today and it's important for us to let everyone know and to, that everyone is aware that these things are affecting them. So here are the agendas. These are gradually becoming more apparent in Disney movies and Hollywood movies. And it really goes to show how artists and creative people can gradually influence you and the general society uh, without a lot of people even knowing. So point one, the breaking down of the family unit and the dismantling of gender roles. Point two, general identity politics. The concept of identifying as whatever you want, regardless of whether it makes logical sense or not, and acting like it's a normal thing. Point three, a lack of original black content. Point four, these movies often have terrible storylines and are generally lacking in quality. And point five, unrealistic nationality groupings. So, we're gonna very quickly explain why these things are a problem, and then we're gonna watch a video that helps to back up the points that we're making. So point one, the breakdown of the family unit and the dismantling of gender roles. So men are often seen as weak or evil or lacking in honor, and often they shake their responsibilities, especially for their children and everything else that they do in their life. And they're quite often missing or they're dead. Mm -hmm. 
So to give you an example of this, we're gonna use a Disney movie, although this happens in Hollywood all the time. If you look at the recent Maleficent movies, in the first Maleficent, we almost have no male characters of any significance, mm. right? And if there are male, male characters that are of significance, they're like trees and <laughs> aliens and other things like, not aliens, not but aliens, fairies, right? Fairy and other things creatures. like that. Um, but the prince in Disney's Maleficent is literally, he does nothing, basically. Then you've got, um king stefan who essentially is a bad guy um and he's the reason maleficent becomes bad in the first place and then the people who save the day are ultimately women and the men just literally do nothing mm. if you look at other male characters as well you'll find that so many male characters are weak mm. they're or they're not even there like the fathers are often dead mm. or the, if the father is there the father is never listening to the son mm. he's never paying any attention to his son and yes we understand that there are certain stereotypes that might be true with certain males in in the in the world history but for you to have almost every father be a problem or to have every male character just be completely non-existent it's ridiculous okay mm. and i think it's very important to understand as yes disney might be certain disney movies not, might be for females and certain might certain ones might be for males but i think it is important to show a well-rounded characteristic of a male and the fact that they can't even seem to identify or clarify what a female and a male role is mm. properly is fascinating the fact that you have all of these girl bosses every girl has to be amazing she has to be able to fight off twenty thousand men at one time never she need can't, any help everything that is just completely irrelevant mm -hmm. it's all very very powerful and it's it's stuff that is subtle that you don't necessarily realize but it affects the minds of people i'm just going to give you an example of how this actually affects um children and teenagers in real life there was a young lady that i was actually mentoring this was part of my job so for those of you who may not know we've both had a lot of childcare experience but i specifically have had over 16 years of childcare experience professionally and i've worked with children from 0 to 18 and i see how a lot of children and young people are affected by these movies so i was mentoring a young woman she basically had it in her mind that no matter what time of night she went out if she was to ever get into any trouble she could literally rely on her adrenaline to pump hard and for her to be able to fight off any assailant that came up against her and i literally sat down and i explained to her the biological differences between males and females i explained to her that there was no way that she could physically fight off several men on her own right and then i explained to her that even fighting off one man is a struggle enough and she still didn't believe me so i gave her a, a literal example right it's not funny it's funny but it's not at the same time she was literally i said to her basically look hun do you think you could fight me now this girl even though she was i think maybe 15 at the time she was physically bigger than me right she was taller than me right and i said do you think you could fight me she said oh well maybe i said look we're gonna do a little role play example i'm going to i want you to stand up and I'm going to try and move you and I want you to try and fight me off. And obviously it wasn't a literal fight. And I was just saying, I'm going to try and move you and I want you to try and resist basically. And I literally, obviously I got her permission. I, it wasn't like I just randomly forced myself upon this girl. <laughs> no I, got, I got her permission and her mum was fine with it. But basically I literally took her down to the ground. And I said to her, I said, listen, I am a very small not particularly strong female okay and even me as a grown female cannot fight against a man who is gonna come against me with some kind of attack and some kind of force and if you even if you are a male if you're a male and you've got three or four males coming against you you're going down facts it's just biological facts you need to understand this and the thing that's crazy even though i took her down she still didn't understand so <laughs> what i'm saying is her mind she literally spent so much time focusing on feminism and again if you believe in women's rights that's not necessarily a problem but when you're trying to say there is no biological difference between men and women that there is no even in our characters in our nature the fact that men are providers and women are, women are nurturers if you are trying to say that these things don't exist what you create is a world full of people who have no idea who they are Exactly. because they are exactly. literally thinking in their minds that 
I can do things that are just completely unnatural, yeah. aren't completely biologically unnatural. Mm -hmm. And I pray every day for that girl because I really want her to be safe. Mm. And she doesn't even realize that she's in danger yeah. because she thinks she's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> That's what it is. And it's just sad. Anyway. Yeah. So point two, general identity politics. Now this is something we're seeing a lot more and essentially it's the concept that you can identify as basically whatever you want and everyone should be okay with that and accept you for it and treat you like it's normal. Uh, this is something we're seeing so much now in Disney, whether it's Hollywood or whatever. And our last couple of videos on the recent Disney movies, wherever it's been uh, the Tinkerbell one with, uh, what's it called, Peter and Wendy, or whether it's been The Little Mermaid, these ones where you've got race swapped characters and you might be asking, well, how is that related? And we're gonna get to that because that is one of our points that we're gonna make. But essentially, what's happening here is there's a minority of people that believe this the majority of people do not agree with this concept you if you walk down the street today you ask most people do you agree that i am a chicken they're gonna say no what do you mean i identify as a chicken well you're clearly a man it's it's just straight facts and it's a it's a delusion let's be real it's a call it as it is call a spade a spade it's a delusion and unfortunately, Disney is now kind of pandering to this. So you have things like in Disney with the last Peter and Wendy thing that they've put out, the Lost Boys are now also young, black little girls. Okay. And then you've got them saying, so, like, what do you mean? <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? So why, 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 are they, why are they girls and they're saying that they're boys? It, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and there's so many things like this now, and this is something that's being pushed. It's, this is a, it's, a, it's a dangerous topic, like we're even, we're trying to be brave in talking about this because they, the woke mob come after people so hard when they talk about any of these things. You know, if you misgender someone, if you get their pronouns wrong, we see the videos all the time coming out about artists, big celebrity artists, saying that now I wanna be identified as they and them, or do you know what I mean? And they're stating their pronouns, and expecting you to follow suit. Change the English language. Change the English language. And, and not just the language, but they're expecting me to say and deceive myself and what my eyes are seeing in front of me and say that you are something else. How can I call the person they when I'm saying it right to your or face? Frog, or frog, <laughs> or demon, or it's just ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous. And, and, I'm, and I'm sorry to, to, to make light of this, but it is laughable. Mm -hmm. I, it comes to a certain point because it's just crazy to even and, say it. If we're not trying to say that people don't have the right to do what they want to do. Yeah. If you want to do what you want to do, that is completely fine. Yeah. You can do that. Sure. But what you shouldn't do mm. is you shouldn't now say you have to change your entire language, your entire belief system. Belief system. Yeah. Everything about you has to change for me. That's just selfishness. Mm. Yeah. And that's and that's the thing. I'm, I'm fine with people being in their corner and saying certain little things because everyone's got their strange little quirks. You know, we all have things that are unusual to the next person. But when the mainstream media is trying to put this in my conscience and make me accept it as normal, it's wrong. It's just wrong and it's disturbing. Like, you, it makes me want to switch off their movies. And that's why Disney's Little Mermaid trailer when you look at many artists, because there's a function now where people can see how many dislikes a video has got. The trailer has got over a million dislikes. It's probably got more now. And in comparison to the likes, at the time that I watched that video, it was like 200 and something thousand likes. That is a significant difference in the people that agree with what's happening versus the people that don't. And to give one, a simple example of this, if I decide that I am now a white woman, and I walk into the Bank of America or the Bank of Scotland or the Bank of England and I say, my name is Becky and I am a white woman. I identify as a white woman and I, even though I live in um, Peckham, I identify as living in Chelsea <laughs> and I would like my loan based on that. Mm. The bank are just gonna, the people at the bank are just gonna stare at me and say, well, I'm so sorry about how you identify. Mm. But logically, you are a black woman that lives in Peckham. That's not, what not, it is. Not even just logically, on your birth certificate, on your passport, on every financial document that we have of you, on everything we have on you, you are this. 
and <laughs> and medically, medically, medically if well. I if something happens to me and I go into the hospital, they're going to take into account my actual gender they're going in terms of medication they cannot give certain medicines or a certain amount should i say of medicine to women as much mm. as they can give to men yeah. or they or even just certain medicines like mm. you couldn't give a man an inducing medicine because mm. they can't get pregnant yeah that's 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 just it doesn't make any and sense that's something else yeah that, that that's something people that people are trying, people to, are trying to say now yeah. right and it's just absolutely ridiculous so when you look at race swapping the concept of the race swap is not, it's not necessarily just the fact that you're literally taking out that person and replacing it with another person. And, mm. oh, it's a fictional character. What you're trying to say is I should be able to do whatever I want to mm. do and everyone else should be fine with that. Even yeah. if they can see that it makes no sense, yeah. everyone else should be and, fine. And there's, and there's so many more examples of this where this is now supposed to be okay. And this is a term that um, I feel like God really dropped in my spirit a couple of uh, years ago is uh, normalized extremism there are things now where we're expected to be okay with this like i don't know it, you may have seen it already but there have been a number of videos surfacing on the internet of drag queens drag queens big men in women's clothing and provocative outfits dancing in front of sexually dancing sorry in front of women and their children and the women are cheering them on and the children are there and, and they go, oh, this is okay. Oh, this is normal. Drag queens going into schools. Schools having books that explain about sexual activities to four and five year olds. That shouldn't even be talking about sex. They're Why does four a four year old, whether it's, whether it's gay sex or heterosexual sex, why is a four and five year old knowing anything about sex why? why why are we talking about why this? does it you can't say that it's not some type of brainwashing it yeah. makes no sense and so this is what we're talking about this identity politics uh what i identify as what should be normal what should be acceptable is is getting out of hand these days and yeah the bible literally says that these things will happen people becoming lovers of themselves and expecting everyone to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And it might seem like a reach. It might seem like we're going, oh, you're taking this completely out of context. It's just a mermaid. Well, it starts with just a mermaid and then it becomes one, another thing and another thing and yeah, another thing. Right, right. And when we watch our video in a minute, you're gonna see what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. So point number three, lack of original black content. <sighs> this point at this, at this stage, this point has been said and tired mm. but the point remains the same black content we don't want to just see only black people getting original content when they decided when disney decided to do moana it made complete sense for them to have a whole movie about an entire culture of people and make it their own original princess mm. it made no sense to just take a different princess and just make her brown <laughs> Okay, yeah. it makes no sense at all. And what Disney have done in the past is instead of just giving us our own black content where we see good, strong black characters, good, strong black families, they either take out some random person and just replace them with a black person or they give you a black character but that black character is not in any way, shape or form equal to the white characters that mm. they would have. Yeah. And to give an example of this, Princess and the Frog. Mm. And I actually put this down in, in the comments um, from our last video, but it's hilarious to me how nobody even noticed that, that Princess Tiana was completely different to all the other Disney princesses that we had. Mm. So to give you a quick list, first of all, she wasn't even a princess. Mm. She only became a princess once she married a non-black prince. Mm. Second of all, it's one of the only times where you see that the princess and the prince are not the same color, mm. yeah? If you look at Princess Aurora, Snow White, mm. if you look at all the other Disney princesses, they all have their counterparts as princes. Mm. But for some reason, our Disney princess couldn't even be a princess in the first place. And then she had to have a non-black prince. Then this non-black prince is a scoundrel of epic proportion, <laughs> proportions. He is absolutely mm. abhorrent. He just does nothing he's not even rich his family's rich but he has squandered all of his money on women and partying and he says that's all he wants to do he mm -hmm. wants to be a partying womanizer <laughs> a blonde head on my right a brunette on my left that's mm -hmm. literally what he sings wow. in the song yep. yeah that's and so he's it. the man can't even brush his teeth and chop 
chop mushrooms okay he literally does nothing yeah so he's not gonna save the day he's not he's not actually good at anything mm. yeah and he has to learn how to be good thing good at things through her which if you understand anything about black culture you know that this is already a problem mm. okay you know that this is already a problem the concept of the black woman being oh so strong mm. and also oh independent and not seeing us as actually feminine women who need help and support mm. Okay, and yes, we do understand that in the end, Tiana realizes that she does need love and she does need support. However, why does that need to be her story? Why couldn't she have just been an Ethiopian princess mm. and an Ethiopian prince came and made her feel good about her life? And like, o- I don't understand. Ultimately, she had to make her own success in the end of it. She had to start a restaurant and her prince husband had to join in and play music at her restaurant to yeah. have to find a living. That's, that's what he that's did. That's basically what that's it is. That's her prince. And what was crazy as well is Again, all the black people were the witchcraft people, True yeah? That. And all the white people had all the money True and that. all the power, True yeah? That. So again, we're not sitting here trying to say that we didn't, because I actually love The Princess and the Frog. I thought it was a really clever story, but I couldn't help but notice all these things because mm. they hyped it up. Like, yeah. this is our first black princess. And I was like, but is she a princess? Mm. I don't think mm. she is, okay? Yeah. And then to top it all off, her dad was dead, okay? Her dad was dead, dead, dead. And then not only was he dead, but she spent most of the movie being a frog. Yeah. A green frog. She did. And you know what was interesting? We then had another main black story in Seoul. And he was also dead. And he also (laughs) spent most of the movie being Being a a white blob. blob. (laughs) Being a white blob. Uh, That's what happened. So all I'm saying is if you don't, as a black person, as a person of color, you have to understand that these things are just obvious to us. They might not be obvious to everyone, but they're obvious to us. And it's it's interesting because it seems like this keeps happening over and over again. Mm. But yes, we'll move on from that point. Yeah. Point number four. Let's be real. These movies are not really that good anymore. The storylines are often very weak and the quality is just lacking in general. Uh, not much more needs to be said on that. It speaks for itself. You go and watch many of these movies and you're left feeling uninspired you're left questioning a lot of things when you watch the original disney movies and you watch you know a lot of things that were done uh, back in the day whether it's 80s 90s noughties the movie quality was just better it left you feeling inspired it left you singing the songs it left you wanting to know more about the film it left you wanting to know more about the characters these days when i watch soul i, I was done after i watched it do you see what I'm saying? And you might argue, okay, you're older now, so you don't care as much. But no, I still, to this day, love The Lion King. I'm Absolutely. always telling you. The original Lion King. The original, King. the original. Not the, not the live one. action, which was appalling. <laughs> <laughs> um, the original Lion King is amazing. Just even the first opening scene was like, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, it was like, amazing. Yeah, come it was on. amazing. Then I loved the adaptations that were done in the play. The play was mm-hmm. cool too. When mm-hmm. you go, when we went to London to see it as, as a young person, it was great. But the new movies that are coming out, I, I you're done after you've watched it one time. I don't Dead feel like dry. seeing it again. Uh, so yeah. Point number five, unrealistic nationality groupings. <sighs> so just to make this real quick, I don't know why we feel the need to have every single color of person in a Disney movie or in any movie. Yeah. I get the concept, because let's be real, real life is not like that, mm. okay? When you, unless you live in a super metropolitan area, which mm. yes, New York can be like that, London can be like that. But if you live, let's just say England, if you live anywhere in England that's not a metropolitan area, which is the majority of England, what are you gonna see? White people. That's the truth. When I go to Hastings, when I go to Liverpool, I see a lot of white people, okay? And it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that because there are loads of white people that live in England. Mm. In the same way, if you go to the continent of Africa, you're gonna see loads of black people. Mm. In the same way, if you go to certain Polynesian places, you're gonna see Polynesian people. Mm. and. Yes, if your character is based in, I don't know, if your character is based in Paris, okay, metropolitan area. Mm. But why do we have to have every single race of person that ever existed in 
in every shot. Like literally. it just, it makes no sense. We literally watched, and this was not a Disney movie, but it was hilarious because we watched this movie called Sea Beasts. Was it Sea Beasts? Sea Beast. Sea Beast. Or the Sea Beast. And to be fair, this was a, a kind of based on a pirate ship, I guess. Mm. But literally it was like every, there was one shot in particular where every person was of a different nationality. And I mean, there was a Chinese guy, an Indian guy, there was a, a Latino guy, there was a black guy, there was a white guy. And it was like, where, how, mm -hmm. how did this happen? Where, where is like, this? <laughs> yeah, where is this in the world? Like I literally live in London, but my friendship group really reflects a lot of people that look like me. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have other friends of other nationalities, mm. but in every, like we have a church circle, right? Mm. And in that church circle, there are more people of nationalities because it's it's church, mm. right? But when you, and when you go to work, you're gonna get more people of different nationalities. Mm. But generally speaking, you tend to reside around people that look like you mm. because it's the culture that you're brought up in. It's not just race, mm. it's culture. So if you have Latino people, you're gonna have people who understand Latino culture together. That's but, just but normal. What was more confusing about that film is that they're, when they represented these people, they made them strongly represent their own individual cultures as well. So it was like all of these cultures they wouldn't, the same, they wouldn't, it would just like, be it was random. It weird. It was very it weird. It was so random. And, and the other thing is adults, the same as children, are very much so, uh, their whole life kind of revolves around what is, what is placed in front of them. So mm. if you go to school, you are subjected to the people in the school with you, yeah. right? So I don't know about where you guys all live, because I know every country is different. But in England, if you go to a school in london for example you might have a lot of metropolitan kids there like when i was metropolitan growing up kids. metropolitan kids okay <laughs> you might have a metropolitan area so when i was growing up where i was growing up my primary school had a lot of asian kids and when i say asian i mean indian because over here we mean indian when we say asian mm. we had a lot of indian kids pakistani kids we had um bangladeshi children we had nigerians jamaicans and you know a couple of white people dotted in and out but then when i got to secondary school and my school was supposed to be a more posh secondary school them folks was white <laughs> okay <laughs> because you're in a posher area in england mm. okay so my circle started to expand mm. because of that right yeah. but it wasn't i just because I went to a white school didn't mean that there was then Chinese people, Latino people, uh, all and these different people from every- friendship circle had every different person. It, it was just, it just made no sense. No. It just made, and, and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive for these things, yes. but I actually heard somebody say um, not too long ago that if you don't have a mixed circle, there's something wrong. And it's like, do you understand like where I live there, for you to see a, a Chinese or a Vietnamese person, you literally have to go to a Chinese or a Vietnamese shop. Mm. Like they just don't exist where I live. Mm. And it's not, we, we live in London. So it's not like everywhere in London, but mm. the area of London that we live in, for you to, you can walk down the road and see an Asian person as in mm. an Indian person or a Bangladeshi person. You can't walk down the road and see a Chinese person unless you're in a Chinese shop. But, but the, the reality it. of it is, is that you relate to people who you're most alike, okay? So there's there's very specific times like this. When I was in school, when I went to sixth form or what as Americans you might call college, there were groups of people that separated naturally. It was naturally. natural. It wasn't like we didn't like the other groups. It was just, we were I cool got with on the with other these groups. people. Yeah. Now I'm from a Caribbean background, but when I went to, sec when I went to sixth form, there weren't as many Caribbean people around. There were a lot of African people around, especially Nigerians and Ghanaians. There was loads of them. They come from a very strong culture and especially a very strong Christian background. And so they all have very specific tastes. They like specific foods. They like specific uh, entertainment and discipline. Mm -hmm. they, like spe they have a specific attitude towards studying. Whereas I wasn't about that attitude. I had Caribbean beliefs and I had Caribbean upbringings. And do you see what I'm saying? So what you would find is that the Ghanaians would be in one section, the Nigerians would be in another section, 
then there will be a, a handful of Caribbeans in one section, but then there'll be white people in another section. I tell you the time when people really came together though, is whenever we had to play sports. Mm -hmm. That's when you'd get everyone together. Mm -hmm. But still, the relatable side of that was you had all the good people playing sports in one area. So mm -hmm. you'd have the best white guy, you'd have the best black guy, you'd have etc. etc. Mm -hmm. So it's just not realistic mm -hmm. to have so many people in one specific place mm -hmm. all the time, everywhere. And mm -hmm. with that film Sea Beast, you might say, oh, well, they're pirates. So they go around the world and they see different people. Fine. Fair enough. But in every shot, do you need to see every person? Mm -hmm. But then when they go back to the village where they're all supposed to originate from and mm -hmm. grow up, the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. Every shot has got a different mm -hmm. type of person there, different nationality of person. And it's, it's interesting because the new Little Mermaid film that's coming out, apparently her sisters are all different races. Mm. So she's black, but she has a Latino dad. But her sister, what? <laughs> Yeah. What? What's they're trying to say, here? oh, it's supposed to represent the different nations of the world. And or, or the seven seas or something. Uh, okay. But it's like. But then at that point, why are you changing the race then? Do you see what I'm saying? But this is my point. If like, it's not an agenda, not why did you why need you to change, change the race in the first place? Yes. And furthermore, if you are in a Danish place, if you. if you Because that's where it originated from. If the cartoon is a Danish cartoon, okay, why are you black and your dad Latino? It just doesn't make any sense. Mm. It literally makes no sense. So yes, I know these opinions seem very strong, but they're mm. also just logic. Mm. If you actually think about what's happening and stop being offended. And again, we know not everyone's offended. We're not saying they're trying to say all of our subscribers are mm. offended, mm. but we're trying to say there are so many people in this quote unquote woke community that are literally not using logic. And when you, when you actually break things down into reality, you understand that this is the situation. Yeah. Like you physically can't be around every race of person at the same, same time. time. Yeah. That just, that it just sense. doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna watch a video clip now that just explains a little bit more about The Little Mermaid. This is the last video that we put out um, and it got some quite interesting responses. So we just wanted to do a review of another Ryan Kinnell uh, video because he gets the content really precise, which is good. Um, and we just wanted to show Halle Bailey's mindset on this character. Now, what we're trying to say here is that we're not focusing, when we talk about agendas, we're not focusing on the artists themselves. We understand that she was casted for this role, but we just don't think that was the right choice. And so we're not trying to, you know, uh, put down Halle Bailey for her acting skills or for her beauty or whatever. She's a, she's a great artist and she's a great actor, but the point is not that she is not a good person. She's just wasn't the right pick for this movie, according to what we're talking about with these agendas. Also, the comments that people are making about her being the best person for the role is ridiculous mm. because they specifically called her up and asked her to be the Little Mermaid. Mm. If it was a thing where other people were auditioning, don't you think they could have found a Little Mermaid that looked more like the original character? Right. They purposely wanted to change her yes. ethnicity yes. because it's an agenda. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's and, what is meant by agenda. Yes. And when it, when it comes down to it, you could have easily picked somebody like um, Ariana that Grande. Name? Ariana Grande. Perfect. She literally yeah. looks like Ariel. Yeah. Okay. She literally looks like her. She has the most, one of the most amazing singing voices in the world. Mm. Yeah. And she's got a long history of acting. Yeah. There are so many other people you could have picked to be this girl, mm -hmm. but you didn't. You specifically wanted a black girl and you did things on purpose, like keep in her dreads. Mm. Now, I just want to point out. When I made the comment about her dreads in our last video, I was not sitting here trying to say her dreads don't look good. Halle Bailey looks amazing with mm. dreads. Mm. But when Halle Bailey is Ariel, she's not supposed to be Halle Bailey. She's <laughs> supposed to be Ariel. Yeah. So the original character of Ariel was a white girl with blue eyes mm. and bright fire engine red hair. Yeah. So if you at least wanted to make her look somewhat re re to resemble the original character, mm. you could have made her hair red not mud brown and you could have made it look like the hair that she originally had we actually got some comments of people like oh you're a self-hater listen i am a black woman i understand that i'm a black woman however i choose to wear my hair is my choice mm. but i'm not gonna sit here and cuss another black woman about her hair what i am gonna do 
is cast the character. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. When Disney picks a character that looks nothing like the original, I have the right to say that it looks nothing like the original, mm. okay? So keep the comments cute and respectful because if you don't keep them cute and respectful, we're gonna block you. Thanks. Over the past several months, we've seen the overwhelmingly negative reaction to Disney's race-swapped Little Mermaid. Every single trailer that's come out has gotten completely and totally annihilated, including the last one that came out during the Oscars 10 days ago that's sitting at 1.3 million dislikes to 248,000 likes. It's go. getting destroyed. The comment section is a mess as well. But what have we said? Disney's not just going to sit there and take the backlash. They're going to continue to make things worse. And that's what they've done every step along the way. Whether it's been attacking people for not liking it, saying you're racist if you don't like the woke race swap trash Little Mermaid. Or, of course, even the star actress speaking out. And this time, she's talking about how they're improving on The Little Mermaid. Because as we've said a million times, when you see decisions like this, race swaps like this, decisions made purely for the purpose of identity politics, it's not just that one thing. That's the way that they think. That's the way that they're going about everything. And wokeness invades every part of the production. And that's exactly what's happening. Not only are they race swapping the Little Mermaid, they're going to completely change this entire story. Holly Bailey says her Ariel will be more nuanced than the original. She won't just leave the ocean for a boy. And in fact, Holly Bailey is saying that they're improving on the original, that Disney's making changes to make it acceptable for the modern world. Exactly. Can I just say, if you actually watch The Little Mermaid, you know that Ariel never left just for a boy. Mm. She had an entire monologue where she sang a song about being a part of the human race mm. up where they walk up where they run up where they stay all day in the sun mm -hmm. wandering free wish i could be part of your world yes mm. i watched it over and over again mm -hmm. okay she never eric was just the catalyst for the decision she already wanted to make which is why her dad was cussing her in the first place because she kept going to the surface because this was her dream anyway Exactly the same stuff we knew would be said all along. That's what's happening. Holly Bailey says her version of Ariel is more nuanced than the original Little Mermaid. And here are the full quotes in context, which I do think is important from this uh, edition ML.com, whatever the f this interview she did. The first time Bailey ever watched The Little Mermaid was around age five. Ariel was her absolute favorite princess. And since its initial release in 1989, Disney's weathered persistent criticism about the movie's sexism. Oh, have they? Has that been the overwhelming thought from, I don't know what, 33 years worth of criticism for The Little Mermaid? Everyone out there just says it's sexist. That's the persistent criticism. Or... Is it maybe within the past, I don't know, five, ten years, you've had a bunch of these woke activists saying, you know what, this really isn't okay. I think I could bet on which one of those options it likely is. And we'll get back to her saying Ariel's her favorite and why some of the things she's said since then makes it so laughable. Bailey promises that her Ariel is more nuanced. Quote, I'm really excited for my version of the film because we've definitely changed that perspective of just her wanting to leave the ocean for a boy. Well, you say you're such a big fan, Holly Bailey, and you would know that before Eric even came into the equation, yes. she was obsessed with going to the surface. She was obsessed with becoming a part of that world. That's what it was about. It wasn't just about leaving the ocean for a boy. It's way bigger than that. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life and what she wants. As women, we are amazing. We are independent. We are modern. We are everything and above, she continues. Wow. And I'm glad that Disney is updating some of those themes. So once again, it's so funny. We see these people say, I'm such a big fan of that thing, but I can't be truly happy until they inherently change that thing, until they change the story to align with modern day identity politics, until they change the skin color so I can see myself represented. We've heard that dumb <laughs> over and over from her, despite the fact that some of the comments she made before that are completely contrary. Here's an article that was written in Bounding yesterday. Disney's live-action Little Mermaid star Holly Bailey torpedoes her own manufactured representation narrative. She's been out there saying it's just so incredible that people can finally, brown and black girls, can finally see themselves in Ariel. 
it's weird. And they use a clip from Variety that I've used countless times in my videos over the past several months. It's her talking about how she identified with Ariel, how Ariel's the reason that she would go in the water and swim, pretend to be a mermaid. How is that possible? How could you identify with someone who doesn't look like you? This is her words. <laughs> Little Mermaid live action or the original? Oh my gosh. This is a really, really hard one because the animated version has always been so special to me since I was so small. I mean, it's the reason I would swim. I would be in the pool feeling like I am the animated version of her. And so today, the dream come true of the live action is super cool. So of course I'm going to I'm going to choose mine because I'm like, what? Part of So, just just keep in mind what she said. Ariel is the reason I would be in the pool pretending that I was Ariel, feeling like I was Ariel. So you could clearly identify her, regardless of the fact that she's a white redhead. Now all of a sudden things change, don't they? Things change when you have to walk this ver Mate. <laughs> There's a difference between <laughs> relating and identifying. There you go. And the truth of the matter is, she was not, when she was in that pool, she was not literally like, I am a white woman with mm. red hair. Yeah. But what she was doing was, I'm a mermaid mm. and I relate to this character and I love this character. Yeah. And it didn't bother her and, that and she that, was white. That right there, because we had a few comments of people saying in the last video, well, why does it matter? She's a mermaid. This is why it matters. Because someone like this has now come out and said, oh, well, we can't relate to the original. So now we have to relate to someone that looks like us. Which makes no sense. It makes no sense. So the point is, is that it didn't need to change in the first place because people could relate to it. That's why. <laughs> and this is also why actors, they do know what they're doing. It's not like yeah. Halle Bailey didn't understand what she was doing when she, she got said, into this role. She said, my version. She claims this version mm -hmm. of this film. Mm -hmm. And Disney has Disney is allowed her to, to, to go and do this. They, mm -hmm. I believe Disney knew exactly what was going to come of this. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Disney wants to continue pushing this narrative of, of all these agendas. Which is losing the money. Which I, I, I don't, don't understand. understand. Why, why think, do you need I to think, do that? I personally think since certain people were not in the same places anymore, I think their creativity level has been low. Mm. and they haven't really known what to do. So they're kind of yeah. remixing things. Yes. And I think they're thinking bad pu publicity is still good publicity because yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's attention. Yes. It's attention for us. People are going to talk about it. But eventually people are just going to start watching your movies. Yep. And that's what's happening. Yep. So it's it's really sad. It's, it's sad to see such an amazing dynasty be taken down over foolishness. Mm. Virtue signal, woke agenda line. This entire thing is a disaster. And the more times these people open their mouths to admit what we know to be the truth, that it's not just about a race swap. One, that was intentional. It was for identity politics. But identity politics is at play throughout this entire thing. We need to make it acceptable for the modern day. Disney needed to change the story of The Little Mermaid because it wasn't okay. She needs to embrace her independence. <laughs> This will continue to get worse for The Little Mermaid, especially as more people continue to run their mouths mm. about this woke race swap garbage. And as far as I'm aware, the movie hasn't even come out yet, has it? The movie hasn't even come out yet, and this is how it's getting received. Good luck, Disney. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. And we just felt the need to let you know that there is a bigger story at play here. Yes, and, and you know what? I have to say, I'm grateful that we live in a time where we do have this freedom of speech. And, you know, there will probably come a time where we won't have this, but for Absolutely. now, it's here. And so just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what you're consuming on a daily basis, uh, whether it's entertainment, whether it's food, drink, wherever it is politically, be aware of what is happening around you because these things are going to shape your future. And it's not to say that you have to fight against everything, but it's just to say, know what's happening so you can not be surprised when people are coming out and, and saying Disney's doing this and Hollywood's doing that. Understand that these things are happening. Or when your child turns around and says to you at a young age, mommy, I think I want to change my gender. Hmm. Don't think that that is just something that randomly popped into their head. Yes. Because really and truly, there's a reason why these things are randomly mm. popping into your children's Do you, do you think a hundred years ago that that would ever have been a conversation? Ever. 
No, it wouldn't have. Like, and here's on. the thing. If you want to get to a certain age and you want to change your gender, that is fine because you're an adult at that point. If you want to be an adult and make a decision, that's fine. But there's a reason why 12 year olds don't vote. Mm. There's a reason why 12 year olds don't have sex. Mm. There's or legally aren't allowed to have sex. Mm. There's a reason why 12 year olds shouldn't get tattoos. Mm. There's a reason why 12 year olds shouldn't be able to buy a house mm. because they're 12. Mm. They shouldn't be making any permanent decision that yeah. could affect them for the rest of their life. Literally. And you might feel a certain way when you're 12 and change your mind. Oh, you yeah. might 100%. feel like you are a frog when you're 12 <laughs> And then realize that you don't want to be a frog when you and, get 16. And the easiest thing to do, ask yourself these questions. Ask anyone around you these questions. And I, I'm not talking about the people that you know are going to agree with these agendas. No. Ask any normal person who's not thinking about it. When you were 12, what did you want to be? And now that you're however old, how is that? Because when, when I was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, I wanted to be a fireman. And as I grew up, I was like, that's not for me. I like music. I like social media. I like art. I like. I was a completely different person to what I was initially thinking when I was a kid because I hadn't experienced anything. I hadn't thought of anything. No, I hadn't been taught the things about life that actually pertain to what I was gifted in. You that, hadn't figured out who you were as you a person. You yet. don't understand who you are. Even with physical development, we literally preach to women. You are beautiful how mm. you are. You shouldn't be getting plastic surgeries before a certain age mm. because your body will develop further mm. as you get older, yeah? You you don't have to do this and that to change yourself. But then we're gonna let them do something that could actually permanently disfigure them mm. and permanently make them unreproductive. All of these things just don't make any sense. Make sense. So. To not go too much into the deepness mm. of politics. Because we, we got to cover all of this stuff in far more depth in as other time videos, goes on. In so, other videos. So don't hold on to every little word that we've said. We're gonna, we yeah. need to break these things down. These Absolutely. topics these topics are so much larger than you know a 20 minute video. These things are complex, but the truth is always straightforward. And it comes, and when we talk about race swapping and identity politics, this is what we're talking about. Mm. It comes very simply from a simple idea of I used to be a white woman with red hair and now I'm a black woman mm. with brown hair. Yeah. What? Yeah. It, how does it happen? It happens yeah. through these little things. So guys, just to wrap things up, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far to the end, thank you so much. Please don't forget to, if you haven't done already, subscribe to this channel, um, like the video, comment. We do love to see your comments. Uh, last time we had a video, we tried to get back to so many people, but you know what? Comments are, are crazy. Once you start getting over 50, 60 comments, it's very difficult to get back to everyone. So please bear with us. We will try and get back to as many of you as we can. And listen, we actually appreciate the opinions of those of you who don't agree with everything that we're saying. Um, as long as in the comments, you will all keep it respectful, please. Uh, then we will all get along and we can, you know, operate this social media as adults. So guys, thank you so much. Take care, have a blessed day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.